Hello, we are going to cover angles, azimuths, and bearings. I'm Howard Harold. Um, used to be a survey, surveying instructor here. I am a surveyor, a, a professional land surveyor. And uh, today I'm going to talk about angles, azimuths, and bearings. Um, so let's, let's get to it. So we'll do a little introduction. Um, in surveying, uh, directions are typically uh, given as azimuths or bearings, and those bearings are either um, south azimuths, north azimuths, or bearings. Um, we'll talk about the reference of what those are uh, as we get through here. So um, angles are measured in surveying they're classified as horizontal or vertical. So today, for the purposes of this video, we're not going to talk about the vertical angles, but we will talk about the horizontal angles. Um, if we get into geodetic type practices for surveying, we would use a vertical angle to uh, determine uh, position or direction on Earth, but for these purposes, we're just going to worry about the horizontal angle today. So horizontal angles are the basic measurement needed to determine bearings and azimuths. So that's what we're going to focus on. Um, three basic requirements to determine an angle. So the reference or starting line, the directions of turning, or the angular or and the angular distance, the value of the angle, right? The the numbers and letters that go along with uh, a bearing or angle. So these are the three important things that we need in order to uh, create a direction. So the units of an angle are really there's there's four units uh, that can be chosen when we talk about angles or displaying angles. So there's the uh, sexagesimal system. That's the system we use uh, as surveyors. Uh, it's basically the circle divided into 360 parts and subparts, which are minutes and seconds. So in the circle, there's 360 degrees. The centesimal system is basically the circle broken into 400 parts, or 100 gongs uh, per quadrant. Uh, so 100 gongs equals essentially 90 degrees. Radians and are are the another uh, way to subtend an angle and that one radian essentially equals 57.3 degrees. A lot of times radians are used in uh, math problems and things like that. They don't really a lot of times use uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. And then there's mills. That's the military application. That's a circle divided into 640 parts. So let's talk about the kinds of angles. So there's interior angles and exterior angles. There's angles to the right and deflection angles. For the purposes of uh, these classes that you're taking, we're going to focus on angles to the right. Um, a lot of our surveying equipment is set to measure angles to the right, so that's what we're going to run with. Um, field notes should always indicate the method that you're using. So when you're doing uh, recording your angles, and distances, we would like to put that uh, in our field book that we're, we're observing angles to the right. Um, so that way, if anybody ever comes back and looks at our field notes, they can tell that, oh, they're observing angles to the right in, in, these, uh, in these notes. Um, like I said, the most common angle are angles to the right. That's what we'll use. And then most total stations and data collection uh, systems that are out there today um, allow you to toggle, really, um, user preferences, right? So you can set a user preference to have it display or, or record an angle to the right and consequently with the same thing for uh, angle to the left. So directions of a line. In surveying, uh, directions of a line is described uh, with the horizontal angle that it makes to a reference line of, dire of direction. So those reference lines are called meridians. Um, so when we reference a bearing, we're referencing it to north, uh, which would be our meridian, north-south meridian, or we're referencing it to south. Um, for azimuths, we can reference it to a north 
uh, meridian, a south meridian. We could even reference it to an east or west meridian. We would just want to make sure we're calling that out when we go to do that kind of, of reference. So there's different kinds of meridians out there. Um, so geodetic meridian is uh, really a meridian that is uh, essentially figuring or using the mean position of the Earth's geode or geographic poles. Um, and it's a mathematical model of the shape of the Earth and direction on the Earth. So a lot of the geodetic uh, meridians are based off of a lot of our GPS system that we have today. Astronomic is based off of either the North Star, Polaris, or the Sun. And uh, it really is taking that, uh, those bodies that are, well, one's roving around the Earth, the other, the Earth is roving around, and using that as a reference to understand where North is. Um, and that's a reference as well. There's magnetic, so a compass direction that might determine what our, our meridian is that we're going to be using. There's grid, so that's basically taking um, the Earth's surface and making it planar. So fitting it to like a sheet of paper and saying up on the paper is north. That's about the easiest way I can describe that. Then there's record. So there are, uh, say I'm doing a survey and I'm up against a subdivision. And the subdivision already has um, a reference created. I can go against in, uh, if I'm working against that subdivision, I can say that, that that line is a record bearing and I'd use that in my map. So that would be my reference or my meridian line. And then assumed, which is not really used anymore uh, because of GPS and how good it's gotten. Um, assumed bearings or assumed direction, assumed meridians uh, are exactly what you would say they are. You assume the direction you're heading. Okay, so let's talk about azimuths. So azimuths are horizontal angles measured clockwise from any reference meridian. So like before I said, you can reference them from north, you could reference them from east, you could reference them from south, or you could reference them from west. We just have to call that out. So for our purposes, we're either gonna reference them from north or for south, but you'd always go clockwise from whatever that meridian is that you're, you're calling out. Um, so like I said here, usually they're from north, but they could be from south. And for, for this class, we're going we're gonna to cover it from both. Um, and azimuths can be any of the different meridian types, geodetic, astronomic, magnetic, grid, record, or assumed. Um, for most of our stuff, we're going to be uh, using um, really a, a, a grid reference or a magnetic reference. I'm not going to call it out when we talk about it, but because the math is the same no matter what from each of those items. So azimuths. So um, they're read directly from a graduated circle. So if I have a north reference um, and it's up, I would go um, clockwise from that north reference around that circle to define my azimuth, much like the diagram in this slide. Um, so one of the nice things about azimuths is when you're doing adding or subtracting angles, it's a, a straight math problem. Bearings are a little more confusing because you're going from different reference parts of that meridian. And azimuths are always um, a numerical value. You never assign a direction to an azimuth. So you'd never say 315 degrees east. It would make no sense. So whatever the reference meridian it is to 350 degrees might mean that it's in a northwest quadrant. If it's from the south, it would be in the southeast quadrant, um, things like that. So we'll, we'll get through that uh, in a subsequent video. So bearings are very different. Um, so bearing is defined by the acute horizontal angle between the reference meridian and the line. So it's always within 90 degrees, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But if you look in that diagram that's on this slide, uh, you'll see that it's different than the azimuth, right? It's not on a 360 degree circle. So here's some rules associated with bearings, and these are important rules to consider. So north and south are always considered to be zero. East and west are always considered to be 90 degrees. 
bear, uh, bearing is always less than 90 degrees. You never display a bearing over 90 degrees. These are sort of cardinal rules. Um, if I have where I come out with my calculation and it's north 90 degrees east, I won't say north 90 degrees east. I will say east because that is east. Um, same with north. If I have, I would never display north zero zero degrees east because that is north. Um, so the only time you would display that is if it was a some type of uh, fraction of uh, north east, northwest, southeast, southwest. You know, some fraction of that. So the first direction noted in the bearing is always north or south. So it's always your meridian. Uh, direction first and then the second direction at the end of the bearing is east or west that's being displayed um, so like I said before if it's if it's referenced to any of the cardinal directions um, north south east or west you would reference it as that you wouldn't say you wouldn't call it out um, so let's get into some of the the mathing problems that you can see examples here in the slide of what a bearing looks like. Um, so here's a little exercise. Um, so what is north 45 degrees 10 minutes 30 seconds west equal to for an azimuth, say a north azimuth. So azimuth, we know if it's a north azimuth, you are taking that north azimuth and you're turning. I should take that back. Turning um, the angle uh, from that zero, right? Well, in this case, we have we're in the northwest quadrant. So, because we're in the northwest quadrant, we want to take 360 degrees because it's on the uh, opposite or on the left-hand side of the north-south meridian, and we'd subtract the 45 degrees 10 minutes 30 seconds. And what we would get for an azimuth is 314 degrees, 49 minutes, 30 seconds. Now, there's some math behind this. So you could, if you have a handy dandy calculator that will do degrees, minutes, and seconds, you can do that. But you can also do it by hand. And, and I'll try in the next video to explain how you do that uh, by hand. Some computing bearings. Here's a nice little nifty slide that shows... A bearing and an angle turned to the right from that bearing and they're asked we want to find out what the um, direction of the line is or what the bearing of the line is that's heading in the southeasterly direction so if we write down those variables we can take a swing at it and see if we can get it um, but for the sake of time I will show you what that calculation looks like so I take the bearing which is a northeast bearing, and I strip the north and east off of it. And then I add the angle that was turned to the right, and I get a total azimuth angle of 128 degrees, 50 minutes, 44 seconds. But I want to take that azimuth and turn it into a bearing. So it's in the southeast direction, so I'm going to come off of the south meridian and essentially subtract 128 degrees 50 minutes 44 seconds from it so that that yields an answer of 51 degrees 09 minutes 16 seconds and it's in the southeasterly direction so I label the front of the angle um, with a, a south and the end of it with an east and that is um, how you would figure that out now we'll go more in depth in the next video um, so this is part one. So hopefully uh, this next video will be a good way to show you exactly how you do these uh, in a longhand format. I'll tackle a couple of them so you have an example so that way when you get the homework, you're set to go.